Let's talk a little bit about events. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found some back into the other ones more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking a little bit about fabric events over here. Now, fabric events are just a tad different compared to new forge and forge events because while well, in fabric, there are way fewer events available to you. Now, that doesn't mean that there are no events. That's actually not quite true. There actually are quite a few uh, and they are used a little bit differently. But once you know how to use them and how to find them, it's super freaking cool. So let's just take a look. For example, we have used the player block break event before over here for the hammer. If I were to control left click on this, you can see that I can find the package over here that is net fabric, fabric MC API, and then the player. And here I will find all of the different player callbacks as they are called or events. But basically there are callbacks that basically just means that if this particular thing happens, then you get a callback to a specific method that you define. So for example, you can get the attack block which basically is used for left-clicking a block. There's an attack entity, which is used for attacking an entity. Same with a use block, so right-clicking on a block, right-clicking on an entity, as well as right-clicking with an item over here in this case. So there are actually quite a few things over here. There's even some client events. So if you gather a block, if there's a pre, a pre-attack one, this is for a pickup interaction aware, and there might even be just a couple of, I think these are just for the mix over here so that it actually all works out. And there we go. Now, those are mostly all of the events, I believe. There are maybe a couple of others over here. We can get this event class and actually take a look. There's a client receive message, message event. There are loot table events, of course. There's server decoding events. There are some amount of events over here. Play channel, simple registry. So you can see there was a couple of events over here, but like I said, when we uh, compare this basically to Forge and NeoForge, it is not nearly as many, but that's totally fine because you don't always need as many events as, you know, Forge and NeoForge have, but you can see there are still quite a few of them that could be interesting and with which you can change actually quite a few things. For our purposes, I just want to implement the player, like the attack block, not the attack block, I actually want the attack entity callback event over here and I just want to show you this and it is super simple so basically literally what you can do if you want to implement any of these different events you can just go on to your on initialize method if it's a if it's a server slash client like a both event right like a both the server and the client if it's client only then you would do this in the tutorial mod client class and what we can literally just do is I literally close the class again that's kind of funny uh, so this is the attack entity callback what I can just do is I can go in here and say attack entity callback dot event dot register and then I can actually like like start typing in player and see I can create this function that it like basically requires just like in line and that's going to be totally okay as long as I add a return over here so in this case what I need to return is let me double check over here it wants a action result that's totally fine so we can do that it wants an action result that's totally fine so we can do action result dot success let's say and there we go so then here we can do all sorts of things and we could either make, similar to how we've seen in the hammer usage event here, we've actually made a custom class for it that implemented the interface because the attack entity callback interface, we could literally just implement this, the interact method, and then it would work as well. But we can also do all this inline if we so choose to. And with this, we can do some pretty cool things. So for example, we can ask, well, what is the entity that we have just hit, right? So we can say entity and then instance of, and we could say, well, is this an instance of a shape, for example, right? So sheep entity, I want to cast it to a sheep if this is the case. Well, and then we can ask if the player dot, let's say, get main stack in hand, if that item is equal to, let's say, items dot end rod, right? And I maybe you know where I'm going with this. So this particular event over here gets called when we attack an entity, right? So this is when we damage an entity. In our case, we're asking for a sheep. So we're saying, hey, is the entity that was just damaged a sheep? And does the player have a end rod in their main hand? And if so, well, then we can do all sorts of crazy things. So for example, we can just for the sake of argument, send a message over here. Let's just say this is going to be a literal text. That's going to be okay. And then we can say the player, the player just hit a sheep with an end rod. You sick frick. Because, you know, that's, uh, I feel like that is appropriate. And then we can also say, well, let's take the, the stack in hand and let's actually 
decrement the amount by one. So basically, one of the end rods is gone. Now, where it went, that is up to your own imagination. But we can also then use the sheep entity and say, hey, how about we just maybe add a add a status effect to it, right? So let's say this is going to be equal to a new status effect instance of status effects dot. And let's do a, uh, I think a poison effect would make a lot of sense. And then we can just add any old duration that we want. And maybe like a six of amplifier, just go crazy over here. And there we go. So the idea being that we can do whatever we want in here. This, of course, requires some amount of Java knowledge or maybe an intermediate amount of Java knowledge. And once you understand that, you basically have everything available to you. Because if you just realize the following, we have just added new functionality to a vanilla item without doing any mixing or anything like that. That is why some events are so incredibly powerful, right? And this is why I basically wanted to show this because contrary to popular belief, like I said, there are actually quite a few events in Fabric that are available. Like, yes, a lot of things have to be done with Mixon, and that is simply going to be the reality of it, because, well, I mean, there just aren't that many events, but there are some events that are pretty cool. For example, this. And we can actually take a look at this as well. So with this done, right, once again, of course, although the code is also available down below. Oh, before we jump in here, we actually wanted to return a pass right here, and we also wanted to return a pass right here. That is quite important. Otherwise, we will actually not damage the entity. Otherwise, it's just going to be like, okay, we're done here, and we don't damage the entity. So keep that in mind that you have to return a pass. Always take a look at the event right here, and it basically always has a little bit of a description over here. So you can see pass falls back to further processing, which is, of course, definitely something we want. So success actually will cancel further processing. So I believe that this should basically not actually damage the entity. Whatever the case may be, let's now take a look. All right, finally, back in Minecraft, and let's just see if I hit a sheep. Normally, you can see nothing happens right out of the ordinary. We just hit a sheep. However, if I take an end rod and I hit a sheep, not only... Well, you can see the player just hit a sheep with an android, you sick frick, but also it was subtracted one of them. Now, one question you might have is why is this posted twice? Now, that is a very valid question, and let's take a look why that is the case. This is obviously due to the fact that the attack entity callback event is called on the server and the client both. So basically, this I don't think it even says this, but basically, this is called once on the server, once on the client. So to, well, handle this, in theory, we could take the world and we could say that we also want the world to be, like, on the server, let's say, for the sake of argument. We could do this, but we don't have to. One way or the other, it should be fine. It's very rare anyway that you're going to send, an ev like, a message when something like this happens. So you should, most of the time, be good to go that you don't even need to check this, but you could, in theory, do so. Oh yeah, that is a how to use an event over here in Fabric, in this case, and basically how to take a look at some other events. Highly recommended to basically take a look at those. They are pretty cool, and there's actually way more than you might think. But with that, that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll talk about sounds and block sounds, so hope to hear you there. So hope to hear you there. So, yeah.